Hello everyone, welcome to Sunday School. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you, I worship you. You are here. And they said, Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Even if I don't see that you're working, even if I don't feel that you're working, you never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even if I don't feel that you're working. Even if I don't feel that you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Yes! Yes! Thank I you! I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With Him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Psalm 16 verse 8. Proverbs chapter 2 verse 5. Then you will find the fear of the Lord and you will understand the knowledge of God. Hello guys, welcome to Sunday School. Today I will be show I'll be summarizing Psalms 73 verse 1. So it says Surely God is good to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. So pure in heart means that you're clear. You never think anything bad about anybody, and you're always innocent. But of course, everybody is not always innocent, because everybody lies, and everybody commits sins. So that's why... God, Lord Jesus died on the cross for us and he rose from the dead. So, what if we're not pure in heart? If you're not pure in heart means you thought something bad about somebody, you're not clear, and yeah, you're not pure in heart. But, we're supposed to pray to God and repent. So, if you guys don't know what repent is, it means ask forgiveness to God. So that's what I summarized from Psalm 73 verse 1. Now I may close in prayer. God, thank you for everything. And thank you for the Bible to lead us. Thank you for always bringing us to the right path. Thank you for bringing your only son down from heaven to die for our sins, for us to be pure in heart. And God, please make us pure in heart. We're sorry we did all the sins. And we love you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I'm 
Hello everyone, welcome to Sunday School. Hi everyone, welcome to Sunday School. Today we're going to look at the Apostle Paul. Now we know that he's had a very interesting life and we're going to look at some of his missionary journeys and really what it was like to be Paul. It was not an easy task for him and if you have your Bibles you turn to the book of Acts and you look through read through the book of Acts and read through uh, the, the epistles. He wrote most of the epistles uh, in the New Testament, 
Uh, he was the one that was responsible for it. But I've got to remember, we all know where Paul came from. He was one that started to persecute the Christians. But on his way to Damascus, he had an experience. And Jesus turned his life around just like that. And he became a follower of Jesus Christ and one of the most influential people in the Word of God. Now, Paul's journey, we have to think about that. There's three, and if you turn in your Bibles, I don't know whether you can see this. This is just some of the areas that he went to. But if you turn in the back of your Bibles, and they have maps in it, you will see uh, Paul's missionary journeys and where he went. He went extensively through the Roman Empire. And back then, the Roman Empire was huge, 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 huge. And so he would travel across at witnessing about Jesus Christ. And so Paul was a missionary in the Roman Empire. And he started many, 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 many churches in a lot of these towns and these cities. And he went on three trips, as I said. And he usually started his journey in Antioch, which was in Syria, which if you get your map out and you look at it, it uh, was just a little bit north of Jerusalem and all uh, of those Caesarea and all of those places. And so he would start there right on the Mediterranean. Now you got to think about it. Stop and think about it. Uh, when we um, started his trips, he took a trip to Rome and that wasn't just a little trip. That was a biggie. And got to remember, back then, travel in Paul's time was not easy. Uh, he, there were no planes. He couldn't go into the plane and couldn't book a, book a flight. He couldn't go into the train station uh, and book via rail. He just, he just couldn't do it. He couldn't get into a car, comfortable car, turn on the air condition and say, let's roll. He couldn't do that. And he couldn't get on a bus. He was limited to how he could travel, as well as Jesus was limited. And all those uh, people back in that time, they were limited. And uh, he would have to take a donkey, which if you've ever been on a donkey, is very, very uncomfortable. Uh, he would have to walk. And sometimes he would take a, a ship on the Mediterranean. Uh, he would get on board of a ship. But it wasn't easy because um, it was dangerous back then. You got to remember, remember the story of the Good Samaritan when they was traveling along, the, the thieves robbed him. And that's what it was like. You had to watch out. You had to watch all over the place. You had to look here. You had to look there. You had to watch because people were waiting in the ditches. They were waiting behind the trees and the shrubs. They were waiting all over the place so that they could um, rob you and take whatever possessions that you had on you. And Paul, uh, when he was on the Mediterranean, if you've been on the Mediterranean or any sea, really, all of a sudden it can become smooth the glass. And all of a sudden, whoa, the wind will come up and the waves will go up and down and you're all over the place. And so the ship was very dangerous, too. And we know that in one occasion, in Acts chapter 27, he had the shipwreck. Remember, he had to throw all the stuff off and everybody on board uh, were panicking because they thought, this is it, we're all going to die and they're going to jump over. The prisoners were on their way to Rome. And he uh, said, hang on there, hang on there. Uh, just trust in God. He's going to get us there. And so uh, they trusted him and they believed him and God got them to where they were going. And you got to remember also along the trail in Thessalonica, and uh, he was beaten up. He was beaten up. And uh, that would be rough to have uh, beaten up because they didn't have the medical stuff that we have now. Even today, if you're beaten up, it's rough. But he didn't have all the, the hospitals and everything that we have here at your disposal. He just couldn't go and say, here I am, to emergency. And they made fun of him uh, when he was in Athens and he was in Corinth. They just really just made a laughing stock out of him and said, all this stuff that you're teaching and preaching is totally nuts. And so they mocked him and made fun of him. And on, and he was uh, also forced out of many towns. They said, get out of here. We don't want you even in our town. Just move on out. We don't want you. And he was thrown in prison in Philippi. And... All through that, all through his life, the remaining part of his life after he gave his heart to Christ, uh, was not easy for Paul. 
He had a very, very difficult time. But there were people who did accept Paul. They accepted his teaching, and they saw the great transformation in Paul after he had become a follower of Jesus Christ and after he accepted Jesus Christ. And he would tell them about Jesus, and they would listen. And they came to it, accept that, that that was true. Paul was telling the truth. And many people did come to know Jesus Christ at that time. But we have to stop. And, you know, we have to say, you know what? Thank you, God, for Paul. Thank you for transforming his life and making him a new person, really. And that's what Jesus does when we ask him into our heart life. He sort of makes, he forgives us our sins, but he starts to transform us as we read his word and as we pray. And he begins to use us so other people can see us and say, you know what? They're a follower of Jesus Christ. And I want to be like that. And so we can become like Paul. Hopefully we don't have to go through all of those experiences that Paul did, but through them all, he was faithful to God. He was faithful to Jesus all through that, and his message never changed. He was faithful to the very, very end, even though he was mocked and laughed at. And you know, sometimes uh, we think when we're, we make fun of us and say, oh, you go to church. Oh, you read your Bible. All of that, we think, oh, I don't know whether I can stand up to that. But Paul did. Paul had many hardships. And back then, uh, it wasn't easy to travel from place to place. And we can see how even the apostles, how difficult it was to get around. And if you've ever been in that part of the world, you can look at it and think, oh, man. They had to walk a long ways. It was kind of rugged, and it was rough, and it was sandy. And so Paul was one of the great missionaries that we can be thankful for that God sent. And that Paul, through the Holy Spirit, wrote down God's Word and gave us most of the New Testament. So to get your Bibles out, look up the verses that Paul wrote, the chapters that he wrote. Remember that a lot of those he wrote uh, books in the Bible, he wrote them from prison. And he would write them to encourage the churches and stuff. But a lot of those were written in prison while he was there serving uh, time because he was either under house arrest or he was in prison uh, because of his faith in Jesus Christ. So thank God for Paul. Thank God for those in your life who minister to you and teach you about Jesus because they're all important. So this week, stop. Thank God for those around you who he's given to you. And have a great week. God bless. Get your Bibles out. Read about Paul for yourself.
Dog.